Well, hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I am a regular dude walking in the Word. Today is Sunday, and so we are, are going through Psalms, and we entitled this Sunday in Psalms. And uh, we're in chapter 40 today. Chapter 40 is uh, probably, uh, for a lot of the secular people um, in the world that are familiar with the group U2, this is probably the most popular psalm. Uh, the group U2 made this this psalm here popular by having a song uh, that they wrote um, that used the Psalm 40, the first part of the Psalm 40. Back in the late 80s, they, they put that out. And uh, at the concerts and stuff, everyone was singing it along, not realizing probably that this is uh, from the book of Psalms written by David. But anyway, we're going to go over that today. And I've entitled it My Testimony. The first part there is really kind of the testimony of God, of David, um, and God's working in his life. And then you're going to see other things that play out in, in the psalm. Um, so, it, you know, uh, let, let's read this. It, it's Psalm 40, and it's entitled, My Testimony Today. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me up out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and miry mire. He set my feet on the rock, and he gave me a firm place to stand. David's talking right there about his uh, being on the run from Saul. Um, he waited patiently for the Lord. It took a long time. Um, but the Lord dealt with Saul and then gave David a firm place to stand. Remember when he was, during those times, he was on the run. Okay, He was living in caves and everything else. So uh, he was a fugitive. At that time um, but God set a firm place for him to stand uh, after the, all that was over verse 3 he put a new song in my mouth a hymn of praise to our God many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him he's saying as a result that you know of, of my testimony many will see and hear based on that uh, and, and uh, turn to God Verse 4, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to the false gods. Okay, so Psalm 40, uh, uh, that's, that section that you too made famous is, is ended now, but now we're getting into the rest of it, which is like 17 uh, verses total. Verse 5, many, Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done and the things you have planned for us. None can compare with you. Where I speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare, okay? If I go and, and to go to the grocery store and tell all about God, it's going to take me days to tell everything God has done. Verse 6, sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not require. Then I said, here I am, I have come, it is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is written in my heart. Okay, God doesn't want all your sacrifices and, and everything. He wants your heart. Okay, and he says at verse 8, I desire to do your will in my heart. Your law is within my heart. Um, verse 9, I proclaim your saving acts in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, Lord, as you know. I do not hide my righteousness in my heart. I speak to your, of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from the great assembly. It, so he's continuing to talk about his testimony and how he's telling people about how great God is. And that, that should be the same uh, way for us. Verse 11, do not withhold your mercy from me, Lord. May your love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles without number surround me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head and my heart fails within me. Be pleased to save me, Lord. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. I like what he says there because in order for you to be saved, we've talked about this here several times, in order for you to be saved, you have to realize that you're a sinner. And that's what he does. He says, my troubles are, in verse 12, my troubles are without number and they surround me. My sin has overtaken me and I cannot see. He's, he's saying, I'm, I'm a sinful guy and I need the Lord. Okay. Verse 13, be pleased to save me, my Lord. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May all who take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back to disgrace. May those who say to me, ah, ah, be appalled at their own shame. That's kind of an odd 
uh, thing to have here in the Old Testament to have that ah uh, ah, uh, but it's like someone pointing out, going ah ah ah, <laughs> you, you know, pointing at you and, and laughing. Verse 16, but may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say, the Lord is great. But as for me, I'm poor and needy. Okay, he's a sinner. That's what he's saying here. May the Lord think of me. You are my help and my deliverer. You are my God. Do not delay. This psalm is just its a perfect example of a testimony. Saying how he's a sinner. He needs God. He's come to God. The first part, he's saying he waited patiently for the Lord. The Lord rescued him um, from the slimy pit. Okay. And gave him a firm place to stand. All right. A great testimony. So hopefully, um, as you look at your testimony, you're sharing your testimony with other people and the great things God has done in your life. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm just a regular dude walking in the word. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we continue our journey through the Bible. Lord's blessing. I'll see you then. Thank you.